Swinburne University of Technology. Hi and welcome to Swimrun Co-Casts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Ruben. And in this video, we're going to be looking at if statements. So far, our programs have only run a sequence of instructions and it's always the same sequence with one output. And that sounds like a real limitation. So if only there was a way that we were able to respond to different conditions in our code. Well, the great thing is we can use if statements to alter the sequence of the instructions in our program and thereby respond to conditions. And really, that sounds quite cool. And I've got this little program here. And uh, basically, it asks the user for their age. And it's supposed to determine whether or not they're allowed into a nightclub. But at the moment, this is just a sequence of instructions that always results in kicking the user out. Well, this sounds like a perfect case where we can use an if statement. So what we have there where we print out the message that they're not allowed to dance, we can put that into an if statement. And we can say, only run that code if the age is less than a certain minimum age. And so when the computer gets up to that instruction, it will check if the age is less than a minimum age. And if it is, it will then run those instructions. Otherwise, it just jumps over them and skips them completely. OK, that's really cool. So we're going to kick the people out who are younger than the minimum age. But I want to be able to display a message for those who are old enough to get into the club. Well, this is a case where we can use the else part of an if statement. So the if statement actually has two parts. We have the if part, so if this condition is true, run this set of code. We can have more than one instruction there. We've only got one in this case, but we could have more than one. Uh, and we then have an else branch, which is run when that was false. So if this is true, run these instructions, else run these other instructions. So here, if the age is less than the minimum age, we say, go away, you're too young, come back in a few years. Otherwise, else, we run these other instructions. Nice. How does that sound? Yeah, sounds, <laughs> sounds like it solves the problem that I had in the first place. Cool. So Ruben, do you want to talk through how this works? Yeah, sure. Okay, so when we first start the program, uh, we've got to store the constant somewhere. So that's loaded up into memory. Yep. It is, yeah. And cool. uh, what we do is we assign the value 18 because that's our minimum age. So we assign the value 18 to our constant minimum age. Then there's a call to the program's main. Alrighty. And we've got a variable called age. So we allocate some memory for that variable. And so that's where the users, when they enter their age, that's where we're going to store their Yeah, their exactly. Age. Yeah. Yep. So let's, for example, uh, just for case of stepping through this, let's say the user inputs 15. Alrighty. So age is now assigned the value of 15. And we look at the if statement, we've got the condition, if age is less than minimum age. So is 15 less than 18? Well, that's true. Last time I checked. Yeah, exactly. So this section of code would get executed. Whereas if we go back and we, we assign the age variable a value, say, 19, then we get to the if statement and we evaluate the condition. Is age less than minimum age? Well, in this case, 19 is greater than 18. So we skip that bit and we go straight down to this section of code. Yeah, so it will actually print out our dance message. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay, here are some extra examples that we've written up. This first one uses the result of a function. So here we're checking if a key was typed on the keyboard. So if they, the user hit the spacebar key, we're going to play a sound. Now one thing to notice with this one is that we're not actually saying if key typed equals true. This is a, a Boolean function, so it tells us true or false to start off with. So we don't need to actually say if key typed space equals true. We can just say if key typed space play sound. So it, I think it reads quite nicely. Yeah, and you know, you could use that in a game environment to determine whether or not a player wants to shoot a bullet or something. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And the second example we've got, uh, you know, applies to a, a business domain where you're selling items. And it reads like, you know, if stock is greater than five and at the same time stock is less than 10, then, you know, we want to inform the user that their stock levels are running low. Yeah, so this would work. So this would be a case, of, for example, if we had seven stock items. So if seven, seven is larger than five, that is true. And seven is less than 10. So that would be true for that case. Uh, whereas it would be false if we had something like, what? 11. 11? Yeah, so 11, 11 is larger than five, though. Yeah, but it's not less than 10. Ah, uh, cool. So that's why we use and. So that means that it's only going to work when both of the conditions are true. Not, but they both have to be true because we're using and. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so that's the end of this video on if statements. 
So if statements help us turn what used to be just a sequence of instructions into something where we can have decisions and only execute code under certain conditions. If this is true, run this piece of code. Otherwise, run this piece of code. You should also consider checking out our other control flow videos. So have a look at the, con the control flow videos on the, on the case statement. But then there's also the looping statements. Yeah, you know, we've got some videos on while and repeat loops. So I hope you enjoy those and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. This has been a Spindle introduction.